Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about ancient planets. Actually, oldest planets. Oldest planets in the galaxy. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the new discovery coming out of NASA and out of TESS telescope. The discovery of a planet known as TESS 561b, which seems to be one of the oldest terrestrial planets we've ever found. Which also raises a few mysteries that we currently can't answer. But before we talk about those mysteries, let's also talk about other planets we've found in the last few years. Starting with, I think, the most famous planet, known as the Methuselah planet. Named after Methuselah, who I believe was a biblical character known to have a very, very long life. This planet, however, hasn't beat by a few billion years. This beautiful Jupiter-like object, this gas giant known as PSR B1620-26 b, is an exoplanet roughly around 12,000 light years away from us, located in the middle of a very large and very well-known globular cluster. And because we can estimate the age of a globular cluster relatively easily, and because we also normally think that a lot of stars in globular clusters appear at the same time, we believe that all of the stars here have very similar age. And in this case, we think that it's about 12.7 billion years. But unlike a typical planet, this particular planet also has a very strange star. It actually orbits a neutron star, in this case a pulsar. And to make things a little bit more interesting, the star system also has another star, a white dwarf, in orbit around the neutron star. So essentially, apart from being the oldest planet we've found so far, the Methuselah planet also has two different stars that it orbits, one of them being a white dwarf and one of them being a neutron star. So it does have a lot of records. But this is a gas giant, so in that sense it's not as interesting as discovering a terrestrial planet. And finding ancient terrestrial planets has actually been very challenging. As a matter of fact, most scientists believe that finding ancient terrestrial planets would be practically impossible. But in 2015 we've discovered one such unusual star system known as Kepler-444 that has five different terrestrial planets with an average age of close to about 11 billion years old. Now this system was extremely unusual, especially because a lot of the planets here were in a relatively close orbit to the parent star, and also because this star itself was not that different from the Sun itself, this was a K-type star with a mass of about 80% of the mass of the Sun, discovering such a system was very unexpected. And so finding such an ancient star system, especially not very far away from us, only about 120 light years away from planet Earth, was not something a lot of scientists expected and it was definitely kind of unusual. But then for pretty much 5 to 6 years now, we haven't really found anything else so strange and so ancient. And that's of course until very recently, when the scientists were able to use the TESS telescope to identify yet another strange, ancient, terrestrial planet somewhere out there. At a distance of about 280 light years away from us, this is sort of what the system looks like, with the star itself being extremely similar to our own sun. This is a G-type star. But because it's over 10 billion years old, it means that this is almost the end of this particular star system. This star is soon going to reach the stage when it's going to start expanding and will definitely swallow all of these planets. But the planet of interest is this one right here. This is what NASA believes it might look like on the surface. It's currently known as Toy 561b, and here is sort of what it looks like compared to planet Earth. It's about one and a half times the size, but surprisingly has an almost exactly the same density as planet Earth. Which of course suggests that its composition is extremely similar to what we have here as well. Although it is possible that it's slightly different and maybe has some other dense materials inside of it. But the major difference here is of course the distance to the star itself. Here a single orbit takes about 0.4 days. Which also means that the temperatures on the surface are ridiculously high. Probably around 2500 degrees Kelvin. Which sort of makes it the same temperature as on the surface of some smaller stars. And to give you a much better visual analogy of what this might look like, it probably looks something like this. It's literally a lava world with one side always facing the star and the other side always being in the dark. We don't really know what happens on the surface, but we do know that these extreme conditions also create some unusual atmospheres on the surface. For now we don't really know what this atmosphere is just yet, we just know that it's very different from anything we can imagine. And just like in the Kepler-444 system, there are at least two more planets here that are potentially terrestrial, although maybe also something known as the Super-Earth, and two planets that seem to be Neptune-like. 
which would probably make them look something like this, or maybe something like this. This is according to some of the NASA simulations. But as you can see from this simulation, these unusual five planets all orbit extremely close to the star, within the orbit of Mercury. Which of course implies that in a few hundred million years, when the star starts expanding, all of these planets are going to be gone forever. But the most important discovery coming out of these star systems is not that they're old, but that the universe was creating these terrestrial planets for billions of years. Nobody actually expected we would find such ancient terrestrial planets somewhere out there, and especially ones with a composition and density similar to planet Earth. This means that these planets, terrestrial planets, may exist and also remain stable for billions of years. Which is great news for those scientists that are searching for extraterrestrial life somewhere out there, or that are searching for some other planets similar to planet Earth. These discoveries imply that many different ancient terrestrial planets exist out there, and some of them could have probably maintained conditions that we would call habitable for a very, very long time. Now, obviously, it's none of these planets. These planets are just too hot and too close to the parent star. But discovering these planets definitely helps us in our search. But one of the more unusual mysteries about this planet right here, the closest planet to the star, is its high density. Because these planets are so ancient and because they were created long time ago, we would expect the stars where these planets are located, along with the material that these planets are made from, to be relatively low in metals, in materials that are not hydrogen and not helium. And because of this, we expect them to have relatively low density. And most of the planets that are usually discovered that have billions of years of existence normally have really low density and for the most part are made out of materials that are hydrogen, helium, and materials that are lighter. They don't usually contain a lot of iron, they don't usually contain a lot of nickel or other stuff that makes terrestrial planets dense and that gives them a lot of mass. But in this case, because this strange hot planet seems to contain relatively similar density and not really that different of a mass and size compared to planet Earth, this suggests that it has a lot of metallic materials inside of it. And that sort of contradicts some of the theories and predictions from these early planetary formation theories. As a matter of fact, theoretically, nobody expected we would even find these ancient rocky planets that have aged over 10 billion years old. But we found at least two star systems that have them, and there are several terrestrial rocky planets in each of these systems. And that currently has no good explanation. And so here, the only explanation is that either there are some really major exceptions to the rule here, with certain stars and certain planets in the early universe being able to have a lot of these metals and a lot of these materials that would create a terrestrial Earth-like planet, or we might have a mistake somewhere when it comes to the theories and the ideas of planetary formation in the early universe. Either way though, these are exciting discoveries and will definitely help us understand how such unusual planets similar to planet Earth could have been formed to begin with. More importantly though, it will also help us understand how these planets evolve over time and in some sense will also kind of guide us in trying to understand how the solar system will evolve and what one day might happen to planet Earth and other terrestrial planets like Mars and Venus in our own solar system as well. But I guess until we discover something else unusual about this planet or find some other really cool ancient planet somewhere out there, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the study in the description below and also all of the other links that can help you learn about this discovery and this star system. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.